Good afternoon. It's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, my case is a 65-year-old male. He's a smoker, hypertensive, dyslipidemic, COPD, and has peripheral vascular disease. His ECG showed the T-wave inversion in the anterior leads with an echo, a normal echo, no segmental or motion abnormality. Uh, he had typical uh, chest pain, effort angina cloth 3 to 4, and somebody sent him to do a stress ECG. I don't know why. He was probably trying to kill him. He had a highly positive stress ECG with significant hypotension and was about to die in the stress ECG. Uh, he was not diabetic. Uh, serum creatinine was normal. And we opted for coronary angiography. This was his left system through the right radial approach. This is a significant uh, left main disease and LED and uh, CTO of the RCA filling retrogradely from the LED. You see a huge RCA. This is a spider view showing a difficult angle to the LED. And this is the RCA with the calcific proximal lesion and probably bridging collaterals uh, in the distal part. Uh, so our decision was a multidisciplinary approach for this patient. Uh, he had the 25 uh, syntax score one, and the syntax score two, uh, due to the comorbidities, it was uh, the PCI four-year mortality was less. So the decision was either cabbage or PCI. Uh, the patient completely refused cabbage, and uh, our decision was to do PCI to the RCA first, because if we fail to do the, the RCA, then there is uh, no point in doing uh, the left main and leaving the RCA. So if we failed in the RCA, then he will have to do cabbage. So I passed with a Pilot uh, 200 wire. That's the wire we had, the Pilot 200. It passed smoothly, so I thought, okay, that's easy. I'll go now with the balloon and finish everything easily. The, the 1.25 balloon didn't pass here. Tried a lot, even with uh, a body wire. Uh, I inflated this part maybe to facilitate the, the passage. Here, as you can see, the body wire and also failed 1.25 balloon to pass. Failing to pass. Uh, I decided to inflate the balloon and do a grenadoplasty here. It's called the balloon assisted micro dissection by inflating 1.25 or 1.5 balloon tillet ruptures, creating micro dissection flaps in this part and maybe allowing the balloon to enter. And luckily, it passed. The 1.5 balloon passed. And I entered with another 1.5 balloon and inflated this part and ensured it passed smoothly. Inflated the RCA all the way. This was after the inflation. Everything's okay. I decided to go with a 2.5 balloon here. A huge RCA. This part was a bit calcific, so I inflated it more with the 2.5. As you can see, the balloon is not uniformly uh, inflated. Well, the problem is that it, create, it created a big dissection flap and I couldn't pass it anymore, anymore. So I put another wire, a body wire, also failed to pass. The 2.5 balloon again passed and I inflated it, but the stents failed to pass. And this was the view showing an extension of the flap proximally and distally, creating a spiral dissection up to the posterolateral branch. Now, nothing wants to pass. Severe chest pain, bradycardia. So I decided to use a guide liner. The guide liner, again, the stent failed to pass. So I did a deep engagement with the Jotkin right and entered with the guide liner till the mid RCA and 
inflated the balloon, the 2.5 NC balloon here. And then I put the proximal stent first to seal the proximal dissection. And I did flaring of this proximal RCA with a 3.5 by 48 uh, stent. And I entered with the balloon of the stent and inflated this part. This was after the first stent. The flow regained a bit. And then to enter with the second stent, I put the guide liner to the distal part of the stent to be able to pass it. Another 348 uh, stent in the RCA. And this was the final of the RCA. And injection from outside to make sure there is no dissection and that the stent is at the ostium. And everything passed smoothly and I said, okay, so we'll do the left main in another session with the seven French IVUS and optimization of the stent in the left main. The patient disappeared uh, for three months. I thought he died, <laughs> but he came uh, and I did the control and geography of the right. This is the RCA after three months, everything's well. And the left main, luckily the same. So I did an IVUS of the LED and left main and I put I used the seven French catheter, so he had the, he had the two uh, big uh, septals. So I put the wire in one of the septals with the subtotal, uh, maybe the the bigger uh, septal with subtotal osteal uh, stenosis. And I put the first stent. It was a three by thirty-eight. And the second stent was a th three point five by thirty-eight. And that's the view after both stents. And four NC balloon inflated at high pressure. And then I did IVUS. I decided to take a larger balloon in the left main, a 4.5, inflated it at high pressure. And this was the, the last uh, IVUS after uh, optimization of the left main uh, stent. As you, th as you see, everything's okay. Well opposed stent up till the left main ostium. And this was the final angiographic view in the PA cranial and spider views. Uh, so my take home message here is that there is no easy lesion and having the proper equipment in the cath lab is mandatory for bailout techniques and safety of the patient. Guideliner is a very important tool for deep intubation and support and it's a lifesaver in certain cases like this one in severely tortuous vessels. IVUS is an essential tool in left main intervention for better long term outcomes. Multidisciplinary decision by the heart team must be made to decide the best strategy for revascularization for the best long-term outcomes of the patient. Thank you. Excellent, uh, Shehab. So, um